Another sector of society that is being digitized is research. You know that yourself from when you research to buy a plane or concert or a movie ticket or when you research for a class. The same happens to us professors who do research most of the day and that actually makes it a very exciting time to do social sciences nowadays. Because for one, sensors are so cheap that we can install them in many places to collect data that we can then analyze to understand a little bit better how things work. For example, we have a lot of new health data now that comes from these kind of observations. Other kind of data is kind of like produced as a byproduct almost. The, the main purpose is not to produce this data, but like status updates on a social network, for example, they just exist because digital conduct almost inevitably leaves a footprint that we can then use in order to study how things work. Companies do the same thing, not only professors. Companies do that a lot. Here are the fishermen, by the way, again, and they also leave a footprint when they use their cell phones, and we can use that and study that. And that makes it very exciting to do social sciences nowadays. It's almost like before we had this kind of data, which is often referred to as big data, because it's a lot of data, it's almost that before that, when we try to understand society, it was like doing astronomy without a telescope. We just couldn't see or, or trying to do biology without a microscope. We didn't have the information, but with this new technology now, it gives us a lot of information and huge advancements, very fast advancements are currently being made about understanding society and that comes because of this digital footprint that we leave with every digital step we take. For example, previously if you wanted to understand what languages are spoken in New York we had to do a survey which is very expensive. Nowadays we simply look at Twitter and what languages are spoken there. This is a map that was extracted from Twitter data and we see that down here in Brooklyn there are certain enclaves of Korean and Japanese and Dutch who, who, who live there and we can simply identify because they leave a digital footprint. So we as professors we do social science with it Companies, for example, use that to improve businesses and governments help uh, use this in order to fine tune their policies. Another example are mobile phones. Mobile phones track in every second where we are. So mobile phone companies are increasingly converting themselves into data provider because they know where you are. They also know who you are. They know because they ask you before you bought your phone certain information about yourself and if they didn't have any information about you they can infer it. If you use your phone a lot you're probably not the poorest person. And so with this information they started to understand much better how mobility patterns happen and they started to sell it as well which is important if you want to open a store in a mall, you want to know where best to locate your store. You can also then measure the impact of a marketing campaign in real time. You can put some ads in front of your store and see if people walk by or don't walk by and what kind of people walk by. And you can optimize not only the location but also the strategy of your store, which is extremely important for your business. Another example is the tracking of emotions. Since we leave a lot of our status updates online, this information is being used in order to create a general sentiment of how an entire country feels. The news company Thomson Reuters and this company Market Site created 18,000, almost 19,000 distinct indices in about 120 countries about how people feel. That's a very fine-grained image of how people feel. And they just didn't say people feel good or bad. They were able to say, do people feel stressed? Do they feel conflict? Do they feel joy, optimism, trust, gloom, anger, fear, urgency? And they could parse this out. This is very important information. For example, 
If you are a stockbroker and you want to know how a country feels, if it's good to invest or not at this moment or maybe at another moment. And for us who study development, this is also, of course, very important because development is actually about well-being. So knowing how people feel about their state is a very important insight into development. Another thing that digital tools allow us to do is to model. So this big data discussion helps us to see what society does and did in the past. Simulations help us to make models that predict us futures that never existed. Engineers have been using that for a long time to model buildings that never existed before. Or natural scientists have used this to study the weather. Nowadays we use it to model, to monitor and then model social systems. This is for example a traffic map of Chicago. We take the data from this digital footprint. This is the traffic pattern. Cars are driving. Where do we have this information from? Well, from your cell phone. If a cell phone travels on a road, we can infer that there's probably a car. So that's how actually that's how these maps work that you use on your phone when you look for a traffic jam. They use phone data. So we can use the cell phone data and we can see these these little mountains that you see here are traffic jams. We can zoom into one and see actually how that works. And then we can simulate and ask what happens if we build this new road or what happens if we change the traffic lights in a certain sense. Here you can see the traffic jam and, and, and how it adds up. We can also simulate, for example, epidemics. This here is a simulation of a terrorist attack in Los Angeles. So Los Angeles was reconstructed and a chemical attack was simulated and then it was studied how people would try to escape, which is very important in order to have better and to better plan for such potential emergencies. So the digital age gives us a lot of information about the past and it also allows us to use computers to simulate futures that never existed. And that's, that's the goal of development. We want to create societies that are better that never existed before and digital tools help us with that.